I speak my mind because it hurts when I bite my tongue. Frankly speaking, with Durgesh Shah and Vinod Sethi, the 1980s, extraordinary period, you came to the frag end of 1980s, but in the mid-80s, three extraordinary investors that would leave the imprint on the Indian stock markets appeared. The first one was, of course, Nimesha, the founder of this beautiful university. Tell me about him, Durgesh. You know him well. Nimesh actually came into the market somewhere in the early part of 1980. His uh, father was an investor, but not into the markets. And uh, he was... Uh, Still not sure of what he's going to do with himself, but uh, as I said earlier that Ferra companies had started igniting the minds of all the youngsters in schools and colleges with the quick money that you could get out of those. So all of us would be there in the afternoons, whatever we were doing at lunchtime to hang around and see if we can get something out of it. Uh, energy levels were high and uh, obviously he has been extremely good at numbers. He had a sharp memory for numbers he still has. And uh, I think the curiosity to get in to everything that he could see then would drive him. And uh, the oldies in the market, I would say, to their disadvantage, were coming out of an era where you had the 62 war, 65 war, 71 war emerging. And never seen a boom. And never seen a lasting boom. So most people would tell you that, why are you wasting your time here? At a young age, go out and do something else. So it had to be someone who was inexperienced in that sense. Outsider. And who had a mind which was young and willing to adventure that had to come. So all these guys you mentioned, they had all the qualities, the curiosity, the intensity. We mentioned Nimesha. The other name that commonly comes up in that period was... Uh a friend of both of ours, but you also knew him, Radha Kishan Damani, right? Yeah, yeah. Tell me about him. I think he's a, he's a legendary investor. He was ahead of his time, uh, very quiet, um, focused on things that we think. Uh, he was into Colgate's and Hindustan Levers and uh, all the quality names way before our time. So he, was, he had great foresight. Uh, he had... In my view, an amazing uh, knack to stay, to listen. In all these years, I have heard uh, Radha Krishnan Damani speak very little. He's he's more of a listener than a talker. I think he also has tremendous trading instinct. So he combines this ability of uh, being a very long-term investor uh, and also having very good trading instincts. You, you tell a famous story or a famous phrase that uh, R.K. Damani taught you about buying value and quality, what is that? I think what Vinod talked about, he had many of these qualities that uh, very few people have in any case. And if you go back a little further and see, he had to come into the markets because of a tragedy in his family. His the father, father was away. running a firm and the father passed away right. suddenly. So he, he had to come. Business, actually. He had to come and take over a firm where there was speculation going on, clients speculating, and this man comes in with insecurity, young and uh, not knowing. So that insecurity of his drew him further into some of those things that we not talked about. But very clearly, his wisdom was far apart. I remember very clearly in 1986, somebody was talking about Speak and Premier Auto and uh, in the same breath, Colgate and Hindustan Lever. And in his own style, he said, Ek baat lo, dharavi, dharavi hota hai, pedero, pedero hota. And that said it all. Which, Meaning quality will be quality? Which I think even today, when you look at the markets, is phenomenal. So he articulated in one statement what Warren Buffett tries to say over every annual report. You know, let's bring in the third character who you said he listens a lot, R.K. Damani. But someone who doesn't listen, he talks a lot, but still he's enormously successful, enormously gifted, is Rakesh Junjunwala. Uh, another R in the market, came late into the markets, maybe around the time you entered the markets, 1889. Durgesh, again, you know him well, he started Flame. Tell me a little bit about him and his investing style and his impact on the markets. See, again, I think uh, his energy level was enormous. I think 
he is probably a little different because he was qualified. He went to Bansi Mata to do his C and he was sharp in his numbers and law. Again, the thing is that he defied his family and came into the markets against their wishes because it was not considered a great place for even people who are not qualified to go and here is a chartered accountant from Bansi Mehta's firm going out and trying Who in heaven would have married him? Luckily Precisely. <laughs> <laughs> so, but he was extremely intense. You just had to be times were different in one building. You had all these guys hanging around. There were only two hours of trading. So there was time before and after trading where you had nothing to do. And all these intense guys who didn't want to go home till they had to. So, if you could find him anywhere on the streets, you give him one bit of a moment and he will explain to you everything about Tata Power and Sisa Goa. And he Those knew, were his favorite stocks. He knew them so well. He took such large positions. He took and understood some things extremely well. And I think it makes a lot of difference. I think his moment of the controversial call or the call at which contrarian call where it made everything. He came in 85, but in 88, when uh, Madhu Dandwante came out with a budget, he was extremely confident and he long. said that I don't care and he went long and that I think made all the difference. Right. We'll take a break, come back and chat some more with Durgesh Shah and Vinod Sethi on Wizards of the Last Street 35 years. Mm -hmm.